I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Speak a little louder next time. If I hear even one Oklahoma State fan say, our team's not getting a lot of respect to start the 2017 season, I'm going to poo-poo that big time. I mean, all you got to do is just look at the preseason polls, okay? Um, the Associated Press has Oklahoma State in the top ten. So does Athlon Sports. And Wendy Sports and Sports Illustrated both have the pokes in the top five nationwide. And um, It's no wonder when you see that a lot of their offensive experience comes back from the 2016 team that averaged 39 points per game and also, too, 495 yards of total offense per game, both in the top 17 in the country, both categories. Mason Rudolph and James Washington made a big decision just after the 2016 campaign that they were coming back for their final year. You know, these guys are more than NFL ready. You know, you know Mason Rudolph, the uh, quarterback who, for his career, is averaging 300 yards passing per game, just unbelievable. And that fact at the bottom of the screen says it all. In fact, he only threw four interceptions last season. 22-6 and six as a starter, and Mason Rudolph is going to have plenty of experienced receivers to throw to. In fact, they might be the best receiving unit in college football. I mentioned that James Washington, who could have gone to the NFL this season. Well, he'll go next year. Uh, you know, you've got James Washington, now a senior for his career, almost 3,000 yards in receiving. Last year, averaged 19 yards per catch, 26 career touchdowns. Uh, James Washington, you know, I'm sure Oklahoma State fans have just got to be tickled pink that he decided to come back for one more year. But really watch for the uh, hernia area because, you know, he's been having some abdominal pain. But it looks like, unlike what one source said, that he was going to miss the first four games. I saw that recently, and um, that basically got dismissed. He will play, but he's going to have to have surgery on that hernia in the uh, near future, probably during the offseason. But Washington should get plenty of assistance. Talking about... Jalen McCleskey, who, by the way, led the team last year in total receptions at 73 and over 800 yards receiving. Marcel Aitman, let's see if he has a healthy 2017 that wasn't for him last year, had a summer 2016 injury, so you never got to see him play a year ago. But in 2015, he did have 11 catches for at least 20 yards. And Tyran Johnson, redshirt sophomore, originally an LSU Tiger, a five-star recruit there, but had to sit out last year because of the transfer rule and Tyrell Alexander should make a contribution just a sophomore. Looking at the offensive line for the Cowboys, for the most part, will be stacked in this area with Brad Lumbley, a senior. Great story. He was a one-time walk-on. Last year started all 13 games. In left guard, you have Marcus Keyes, who just like Lumbley started every game last year, and but Keyes did so as a freshman, now entering year number two. And at right tackle, Zachary Crabtree. He's got experience in last year. Um, was second team all Big 12. He's a two-year starter as well. Looking at the right guard position, Larry Williams, entering his fifth year, played six games a year ago, played the first five, got hurt, but did come back for the bowl game. And in addition to this team that should be very worthy, we're talking about left tackle in Aaron Cochran, a transfer from Cal, playing his final year in Stillwater. He's at 6'8 and 350. Looking at the ground attack for the Cowboys, I know OSU's Ground game wasn't one of the best in college football. It was 170 yards per game, but at least it gave them a two-dimensional attack. And, hey, that rushing total was 50 yards better per game than it was in 2015. So there's a sign right there that things, again, could work out with the ground game. Of course, Justice Hill played a major role in that as a freshman, had over 1,100 yards on the ground. But really watch a big area. That is going to be depth, okay, because they're not going to be as experienced as they were last year at running back. Gone is Rennie Childs, gone is Chris Carson, gone is Barry Sanders Jr. So, yeah, this will be a challenge if anything should happen to Justice Hill. Are the Cowboys Big 12 championship and college football playoff worthy? In terms of offense, absolutely they are. But I'm not going to lie to you. Defensively, they are on a level far beneath that. In fact, it's below the ground if you want to be more specific. As far as pass D and as far as total D, they're outside the top 90 in 2016 in both categories. In fact, they gave up uh, close to 450 yards of offense per game, which will not cut. It. Um, and then to make matters worse, you lose Vincent Taylor early to the NFL. So we're going to begin defensive line for the Cowboys. I think they'll be better at the ends than they will be at the tackles. Jerome Owens. Um, and by the way, all four of these guys up front are juniors, um, 25 tackles a year ago. Traylon Weber, 
Now, he didn't figure in the starting rotation, but boy, did he play. And he's back, led the team in sacks as far as returning starters with six. The other defensive end, Jordan Brailford, a junior, didn't play last year because of injury, but two years ago did see action in 10 games and had 23 tackles. Defensive tackles, like I mentioned, not as experienced as the ends, Trey Corner, Redshirt Jr., but he did play 11 games last year. And running out the lineup for Oklahoma State up front in that fourth real alignment, you have Darian Daniels, um, who played all 13 games, um, didn't start, though, and had 15 tackles. Linebackers, a little more experience in this department. Chad Whitener returns, the middle linebacker for his fifth and final year, Redshirt Sr. And this guy um, can absolutely... Uh, hold his own at that position. Strong side linebacker, Kirk Tucker, primarily a special teams player last year, the senior, but did start late in the season on defense against TCU. And running out the linebackers at the weak side, you've got Justin Phillips, Richard Jr., who got a couple of starts last season and had 47 tackles. Not bad. 39 tackles, well, that is what Kenneth Edison Magruder registered, but that was from his safety position, but the Cowboy coaches feel like he'll be more comfortable and a better asset if they move him closer to the line of scrimmage. So he now goes from defensive back to linebacker. So a little more depth of linebacking spot. But you do lose Jordan Stearns from the secondary. Uh, the all-everything safety had over 100 tackles last year. So his presence will be a big board for the team. Looking, though, at uh, some other safeties, and this will be a strong point on the defense for Oklahoma State. Uh, Ramon Richards, so moving him from the corner, to the free safety position. Why not? 48 solo tackles a year ago. 64 tackles overall. Trey Flowers enters his final year as well. Second team all Big 12 a year ago. Um, 200 uh, tackles in his career. And last year had seven pass breakups. So he was on the money. But the corners, this is going to be a pretty raw area in comparison to the safeties. A.J. Green, he's back though for his sophomore year. Played nine games last year, but takes on a bigger responsibility as a starter. And the other corner, Mondre Harper, also a sophomore, came from the Dallas area, Arlington Lamar is where he played his high school ball. And you can see there at the bottom of the screen, uh, the special teams players, um, the punter, he has high accolades, but you do have to replace the kicker from a year ago. Highlight the Cowboys schedule. It's weird to begin the 2017 season. I mean, they start the season on a Thursday against Tulsa, August 31st, and the next week, they play on Friday against South Alabama. I mean, the Cowboys really love to cover that weekly calendar, huh? OSU, if everything pans out the way it should, they should be 3-0 and possibly 4-0 with TCU looming ahead, and you get two weeks to prepare for that particular game. They've had a lot of success against Texas Tech recently, so you got to figure a 5-0 start is likely, possibly 6-0. Baylor, terrific starters, but lacks major depth, plus you get the game in Stillwater. In fact, five of the nine... Conference games are at T. Boone Pickett Stadium. But the second half of the schedule, that's when the difficulty rises notably. you got to go to Texas, even though you haven't lost in Austin since 2008. West Virginia will be a formidable challenge as well. And, of course, you notice the Bedlam game is not at the end of the season. The Big 12 did this on purpose because they did not want Bedlam back-to-back -back weeks in the event that the Cowboys and Sooners should meet in the Big 12 championship game. So they'll play in early November. Las Vegas says Oklahoma State will win nine regular season games. I'll go a game higher and say ten because I think the Cowboy offense will be just as good, if not better, than what we saw last year, which is scary if you are a Big 12 defense trying to contain them. However, speaking of defense, that's the same reason why I'm not picking Oklahoma State to win more than ten games. you got to do better than 92nd in the country in total D. That won't cut it, even though I think the Cowboys will finish in the top two in the Big 12 regular season, which will get them in the Big 12 championship game, that championship game back after a seven-year hiatus. And that's my look at Oklahoma State. A reminder, August 30th is when I'll have my college football playoff preview in which I will pick all the major conference winners and have the four teams who I think will go to the college football playoff and who I think will win the national title. See you later.